In previous videos, I've talked about how creative nonfiction is both thorough research facts and real people and fiction techniques like narrative arcs and scenes. But nonfiction can also be experimental. This is why I recommend writers read Europeana, A Brief History of the 20th Century by Patrick Ordnick, translated into English by Gerald Turner. In order to show the horror and absurdity of the 20th century, Ordnick uses a unique way of organizing facts, a circular time frame, and callouts in the margins to create an objective, rhythmic historical account. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers, because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. I'd like to start with modules of focus or no chapters. Instead of dividing Europeana into chapters or parts, Ordnick only uses modules and he separates these with an extra space. He will choose a topic, focus on it for a page to a page and a half, and then transition to the next topic using that extra space. These modules concentrate on everything from war to sexuality to religion, even to when the 20th century starts. One section describes people's confusion as to whether or not they should celebrate the turn of the century in 2000 or in 2001. It goes. At the end of the 20th century, people were not certain whether they were to celebrate the beginning of the new millennium in 2000 or 2001. It was important for people who were waiting for the end of the world, but most people did not believe in the end of the world, so they did not care. This section or module goes on to further describe different people's beliefs about when the 20th century should be celebrated and the end of the world. By focusing on one specific subject like this for only a short period of time, instead of a specific event or person or country, Ordnick avoids the temptation of passing judgment on that subject. This preserves his objective narration and is something other authors should pay attention to if they're struggling with creating an objective voice, or if their story just doesn't fit in the traditional structure and doesn't need chapters or parts. Maybe it needs modules like Ordnick's Europeano does. These modules are really important for Europeano because it provides that white space. It is the only break on the page that gives readers' eyes a time to relax. It is crucial to the success of this novel. Writers who lean towards larger blocks of text should pay attention to how Ordnick breaks up those blocks of text and to his use of white space. Large blocks of text can quickly become overwhelming for readers, causing them to either skim or pick a different story altogether. In addition to these modular segments, Europeana is known for its circular nonlinear time. Well, each module focuses on one subject, and then the next module focuses on something else, Ordnick doesn't simply abandon that original subject. He does circle back to it later. This is really important for building the circular, nonlinear time frame of Europeana. Europeana begins with, The Americans who fell in Normandy in 1944 were tall men, measuring 173 centimeters on average and if they were laid head to foot, they would measure 38 kilometers. The Germans were tall too. Here, Ordnick is showing the death toll of the Holocaust of World War II through the measurements of human beings. He doesn't have to comment on how many people died, all he has to do is relate these specific facts. Later, he returns to World War I with, the First World War was also called a trench war because after a few months the front became static and the soldiers hid in muddy trenches, and at night or at dawn they launched offensives. When Ordnick returns to the subject of World War I, he doesn't return to measurements. He returns to a different aspect of that subject. That's why this circular time and modules works. Ordnick is not repeating information. Writers who want to use a non-linear structure and return to a specific event or character should really pay attention to how Ordnick does this. He doesn't repeat information, but he still reminds the reader of what came before. That is key. If you keep saying the same thing every time you return to a specific subject, your reader is going to become annoyed and bored. 
To keep your story from becoming repetitive, make sure and introduce fresh story elements or details each time you return to that subject. Like the modules themselves, Europeana's circular time contributes to its objective narrative. By cycling through the events, years, and subjects in this manner, Ordnick avoids inserting his, other people's, and other cultures' opinions and biases. He sticks to the facts of that specific subject, knowing that he will return to it again and be able to explore another aspect later, instead of having to fit it all into one small section. As the author, the knowledge that you're going to return to a subject is a great way to avoid info dumps. If you know you're going to come back, you know you don't have to say everything right then. You can weave that information throughout your story and build it in layers like Ordnick does in Europeana through circular time. Another experimental aspect of this book is words in the margins or the callouts. Europeana plays with structure in another way, and that's by putting these faded small bits of text in the margins of the book. The section from earlier on when to celebrate the 20th century has the callouts yin and yang, end of the world, and breakdown. While some phrases in the margins seem to be the subject or main point of that module, some of them just feel completely random. And while I don't know what Ordnick's intention was in having these callouts, to me they are a comment on the phrase, history is written by the winners, that when you pull something out of context, it is no longer meaningful. The same way that if you took one word or one phrase from a book, it would not represent that whole book. It would not be an accurate story. By pulling out certain words and phrases, Ordnick is showing how you can completely change the narrative when you eliminate key points. Regardless of the purpose of these words in the margins, authors can use them as inspiration. Light gray words in the margin of a text could symbolize a fading memory, another character's perspective, or a shadowy undertone. Whether you choose to experiment in this way or not, remember the importance of white space. You don't want to fill every margin with text because then it becomes overwhelming and the whole page looks like one solid block of black ink. Instead, use this idea sparingly, or maybe manipulate the text itself to have more space if you are going to take away that space in the margins. Either way, don't be afraid to experiment with the form of your text, even if you're writing nonfiction. Next, I want to talk about why an editor believes Europeana by Patrick Ordnick is a successful experiment. The Jack Kerouac School of Disembodied Poetics, the MFA program at Naropa University, is experimental. They want to see their students create a new form or a new reading experience, so they really push that experiment. What they don't push as much as I believe they should is when an experiment is successful. An experiment by nature is a test or a trial run. It doesn't always work out. Europeana is an example of a successful experiment. The combination of the modules, circular nonlinear time, and callout create a unique experience an objective historical account. By focusing on the facts and circling back to them, Ordnick avoids saying whether something was right or wrong. He doesn't pass judgment on any of these things. He simply reports that they happened. By stating these facts objectively, the horrors, absurdities, and even contradictions of the 20th century come into sharp focus. Ordnick doesn't have to say the death toll of Normandy. All he has to show is how far the bodies would stretch to leave an impression on his reader. When the experimental aspect of a text adds to the reader's experience like Europeana does, that's when that text is a successful experiment. When it confuses, distracts, or serves no purpose, that's when it's unsuccessful. A successful experimental piece of writing should not have the same impact or not work if it wasn't written in that experimental way. If you can take away that experimental aspect and still have that same basic story and leave a similar impression on the reader, then that experiment isn't necessary. So why are you doing it? I'd also like to point out that Ordnick is not claiming to have a complete account of the 20th century. By titling it Europeana, he's letting the reader know he will be focusing on Europe, and by saying a brief history, he's letting the reader know it's not all-inclusive. 
you couldn't possibly tell the whole story of the 20th century in 122 pages. Your story doesn't have to cover every little detail of an event or era either. You can focus on specific aspects to tell the story you're trying to tell. What do you think the words in the margins of Europeana are intended to do? Share that in the comments below. And for more videos that tease out the techniques writers are using to create a successful experiment, subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you transform your stories so they linger with readers, because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. To find out more about me, go to www.ignitedinkwriting.com. There you will also find a worksheet on how to use synonyms to build your authorial and characters' voices. And now it's your turn to experiment with the form of your story through modules, nonlinear circular time, callouts in the margins, or some other aspect to ignite your ink.